All right. Hello, everyone. What am I doing today? Oh, yeah, I got uh, pathing kind of working, so I'm going to cover some spline stuff for showing the lines of movement. Um, had to refactor some stuff, move some stuff around, delete some stuff. But, uh, yeah, I think it's coming along. So let's uh, hop in. First things first. Instant static meshes. I did not need to do this. Like this is if you have like thousands of foliage graph or grass meshes that you need to redraw in different places. Whereas my level, uh, as you may remember, is really small. So I don't really need to worry about that stuff. And it's a total pain in the butt to work with. So what I'm still kind of using it for fences and walls because I don't need to interact with them. I'm probably going to remove that at some point. Um, I'll just move to just having static meshes uh, just because, again, they're easier to work with. And what I mean by that is if we look at, uh, what is it, going mouse over. So getting the mouse over events to work properly, um, I'm able to get the the instant static mesh component but it was really hard to get the actual instances you had to do a bunch of stuff and it was just too much work to figure out like which x y coordinate it was for that particular instance of that uh, static mesh instance so what i ended up doing was changing just the floors and the stealth points to being static meshes and it just makes it infinitely easier to work with because I can set the uh, the on mouse overs and stuff um, for that. So if we look at where am I? On mouse. Oh, and another thing, instant static meshes. You cannot dynamically change the materials of them. So that made it really hard. And I got hovering working by changing the materials. So I'll just show real quick what that looks like. So I guess we'll cover hover first, and then we'll move into the pathing. So now when you do mouse over, we get this nice little effect of this. <laughs> it's basically just hi highlighting the, the cell that you're over. Um, so yeah, it works by, if we take a look at the material for this, uh, where was it? Glow highlighted, which was part, yeah, this is the material. So I kind of copied the original Tronish material stuff here. Um, except for I'm inverting it and then I'm passing in the time as an input data into a sine wave multiplying that by the glow so the glow will basically glow up the the tile that I'm mousing over so it gives this kind of nice little effect of yeah bloops and I'm pretty sure I can divide the time or subtract from the sine wave to make it smaller so it's slower I don't know if it's too distracting yet but it seems about the right speed I don't know I'm, I'll play with it later as with a lot of this stuff, I'm going to have to play with all sorts of things as I get going, because I still am really annoyed by these. Um, oh, yeah, I got a little character. I'll show them in a second. Um, these just jagged lines. It just looks absolutely terrible. And I don't know if I need, like, a post-processing filter or something to get it to not look like garbage, but I definitely need to work on that because it's really distracting me. So... So yeah, that's hovering. Uh, let's look at the code real quick for hover. I think the only thing I needed to do was to apply, did I even need to? All right, so instead of adding the instance now, since it's a static mesh, I just add this uh, add walkable static mesh where we set the mesh, the material, we set the mobility, world location, collision stuff. And then we do set, uh, on mouse over events for the begin mouse curse begin cursor over and end cursor over and this is again something you could i think you could do it for the instant static mesh component but not the individual instances so when you on mouse over it would just give you the entire component or the instant static mesh not the individual instances of it so it's kind of uh, janky to work with um, since this is dynamically added we're using register component here uh what else yeah transform keep relative transforms Nothing, nothing too spectacular here, just attaching the component. And yeah, so that's how the static mesh is added. Now when we do that on mouse over, this is like super debug code. But what we're doing is we are on mouse over, make sure we have a material instance 
um, if it's a floor component. And there might be a better way of getting like data about the instance that I'm over, but now I'm just using strings, which it's never good to do string comparisons in a game, but whatever. Uh, we'll fix that as well. Um, yeah, so I get the material instance depending on whether it's floor or the stealth one. <coughs> Make sure we have a valid reference to it. Set the material instance. Uh, and then we call into the player controller. So we're saying we're going to notify the controller like, hey, the player just moused over my actor. And then it's going to do certain things uh, depending on if a character is selected or not. So I, I need some communication back between the level and the controller for the player. On mess out is like s the exact same, except for we're just reverting it. So we're just changing it back to the normal floor one or the normal stealth material. So yeah, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It works. Uh, yeah, a lot of duplication. I got to undo some of this, but whatever. <coughs> Excuse me. It's been a long day. Okay, so that's hovering. Now let's take a look at the other thing that I got in, which is pathing. We got these nice little lines now, so we can, it's not wired up to anything, but at least this confirms that the pathing code, you can see if I uh, go quick, there we go. This is probably really small, but uh, it creates the entire path using that A star algorithm that we've seen many, many times. And yeah, it does the trick. It just kind of does what it says on the tin. So, which is great because now that I confirm that that works, now I can basically play with having a, whoop. If I do this again, oh, yeah, that's right, I can do this. So now when I select a character, I'm going to have to keep track of the path movement data and then, yeah, where they go to and all that other good stuff that's needed for character selection and moving them. Uh, as a reminder, there's going to be three characters for a player. Uh, so, yeah, we need to switch in between these characters, um, highlighting and then right clicking to move and all the other good stuff. So, yeah, that works. Pathing, how does it look? So, I took, uh, I don't know if it's an interesting approach or a standard approach. I don't know. I'm still learning all this stuff. It's all, yeah. <laughs> but what I did do is I created a spline controller actor. And this actor is the one that's set up to hold the mesh material as well as the spline material. And it's kind of the controller for generating these paths. And a path is a actor component, uh, which is this path component here, uh, U actor component. So the spline controller itself is very basic. It, just takes in a character ID, which right now we're just passing in zero because I don't really have one set up yet, uh, and a an, uh, T-array of points. And then we are generating this uh, path component and then registering it with the world and drawing the path, calling the into the component to draw the path, and then we're adding it to a list of paths because as a character does things or the player selects, deselects, or maybe they want to remove the path, we're going to use this to control removing those uh, drawn points and whatnot. So we need some way to reference it. So I'm going to have like clear for character or whatever in here. So yeah, controller is pretty basic at this point. It'll get a little bit more complicated, but for now, uh, let's take a look at the path component. So path component, pretty much the same thing. Uh, we just draw the path, but this time we're being passed in the spline mesh and the spline material. The, the reason for this is I may want different types of pathing looking stuff. Uh, so, like, for ex a great example would be, let's say the player, one of the characters is got some poison on them or something. They have some uh, detrimental effect. Uh, the path would be shorter. We'd want to kind of show, like, oh, you can only go th five steps instead of ten steps now because you're poisoned or whatever you're rooted or snared or whatever it is. Um, and then we could change it to like being this like dark green color or something, or dark red or something. So it just allows for some uh, dynamic customization there. How this actually looks in Unreal, though, is a little bit different. So if we go back to the spline, no, the level. Uh, the level itself has, I wonder if this is too small. There we go, let's make it a little bit bigger. We're using T subclass of the spline controller actor. And the reason for doing that is we want to spawn an instance when the level is generated or when the levels uh, begin played happens. And we want to pass in a blueprint for that spline controller 
because it's super easy to set up the static mesh and the material in the blueprint. Once we have a reference to the blueprint inside of the C++ class, then once the begin play is started, we call into, where's the begin play? Uh, we call get world spawn actor, and then we pass in that T subclass blueprint uh, class to create the actual spline actor class itself. Uh, because the blueprint will inherit from that class. So this just allows us to super easily uh, configure static meshes and stuff. So if we look at the level and we look at the BP spline controller actor, again, it's probably going to be really small because Unreal does not let you, what am I doing? Type in Unreal while I'm talking. Magnifier. Um, uh, where is it? Where's my magnifier? Where'd it go? All right, so here, spline mesh, spline material, we can set it here. We could make it be anything we want dynamically. Uh, for example, if I set the, let's set the material to something like just goofy just so we can show. Like, yeah, sure. I don't know what that's going to do. Um, so now this is set in the spline controller actor. If we hit save, we hit play, it should use that new material. And it does, but you can't really tell because it looks weird because it doesn't it's not supposed to be on this type of spline actor whatever but yeah so that's how you allow yourself to easily configure uh, different meshes and stuff there is a way within C++ there's a couple of ways of doing it uh, using the F object finder but then you have to pass a direct reference like a string based reference to it and my understanding is that that's kind of frowned upon um, doing it that way because A, it's hard coding, which is always not good. And uh, yeah, it's just easier for a non-developer person to come in and change meshes and materials. So yeah, if you're gonna do that kind of stuff, it's always make a blueprint, make it easier for everybody else. MI path, that's what I want, right? And cube, I left the same, I think. Oh, let's just make sure this still works. Yay. So yeah. So uh, the material for pathing, I think I already showed. No, maybe I didn't. Oh, that's the material instance. Never mind. Did I show the? No, I showed the highlight one. Uh, the one for pathing is like dead simple. It's just a color and then a glow and then multiplied and then created emissive. So that's all there is to that. Um, it still doesn't look super great. Uh, Wondering, so I remember in Atlas Reactor, you could, it would have this nice little, I don't know if it was a particle effect or maybe a material effect that would, it would kind of show the direction. Uh, I would love to get something like that in because it just would make it look a little bit better than what we have here. But for now, baby steps, just trying to get stuff working first. So that is how we set up the spline controller. Now let's take a look at splines themselves. So, uh, no, that's level pathing. That's the pathing stuff. Where's my path component? There it is. <coughs> so, I think in the battle level, or is this player control? No, it's player controller. Yeah, all these things are so interconnected. Player controller, on the left click, we set, uh, or is this left click, right? Yep. So, on left click, we make sure we have a uh, floor selected uh, and uh, here is going to where we do the check if a character is selected but we don't have one in yet so uh, we get the location we translate not so what I was doing in the beginning was translating where the mouse click was which was totally wrong because that was giving me some random value and sometimes it would choose one XY coordinate versus a different one and I'm like no you need to use the, the components uh, center not where the actor clicked and once I figured that out translating the world to the point 2D was dead simple. So to clarify that we'll take the F vector of the XYZ coordinates, translate it to our maps XY coordinates so that we can work with them easier for uh, the A star algorithm. Uh, and then I've created this kind of world point which has a combination of both the XY and the location just to make it easier for myself. Uh, I imagine I'm going to use this a little bit more, especially in terms of uh, dealing with other movement, uh, yeah, I think the movement, battle movement component and stuff like that are going to use those because it's easier to know, switch back and forth between X, Y and the X, Y, and Z 
of the actual F vector. So we left click first, that sets the start location, and then on right click, we create the end location. Again, making sure we have floor selected, everything's valid. Uh, we translate the point again, and then we call the, the pathing algorithm, uh, which I moved out of the battle level because it was getting like super long. Uh, so I'm like, pathing is a totally separate thing. It should be in its own class, so I moved that over there. Uh, yeah, and then it just kind of iterates through the points, and then it translates that point 2D world to the F vector, because we need the F vector uh, T array of F vectors for uh, drawing the paths. So we add it to a T array of those, and then we call the level, the pathing, and then draw a path. So that lets us call into the controller actor, which then calls into the component. Come on. All right, whatever. Where are you? Path component. Uh, draw path. So here we make sure that we have a spline component. We have everything we need to go. Uh, we set the ID, the character ID for this uh, path, because this is going to, I forget what I do with it. Maybe I don't need that. Maybe, I, yeah, I don't, probably don't need that in the path component. I probably only need that in the actor, but whatever. Anyways, so first we clear any spline points that this, this particular component has, uh, just to make sure it's clean. We take our F vector of points, we add spline points, which takes the uh, coordinate space of world, I forget what this true is for. Oh, update spline true. I don't even know if that's needed, to be honest, but whatever. So it's kind of weird. You have to first add to the spline component the spline points. Then you reiterate over the spline component. I wonder if you could do this in the same loop. I bet you could. Anyways, uh, yeah, because where do I index into spline component? Attach to, I guess I don't. That's weird. Anyways, so I iterate over the spline points. Uh, we're creating a spline mesh component. Uh, we set the mobility to static. We attach it to our top level spline component. Uh, this component we attach to our spline component. Uh, and then we shut off uh, dynamic shadows because we don't, definitely don't want it to cast shadows. We set the static mesh, the material, the scale, uh, which I basically, since I took the cube, I scaled it way down. Um, yeah, and then we create the, the points using the local location and tangent at spline point. There's various versions of these, which I didn't have time to play with. I just kind of, the first thing I got working, I just left it in there. So I'm sure there's ways that we can make the line look better. Like when it hits an angle, instead of just being a sharp 45 or 90 degree angle, we can kind of curve it a bit, which would probably look better. But yeah, I will fix that when I need to. And then, yeah, register the component. And that's pretty much how that works. So now we have super nice looking little pathing going. So yay. Right, so that kind of covers what I needed to get done. Um, is there anything else I did? Again, it's been, a, it's been a long week, so I didn't get too much done here, but I got enough. Uh, character stuff I covered last time. We actually got it all working, except for I was gonna do this scale within the uh, asset table or the data table, but I don't really care right now. So I guess the next thing is to play around with getting a, a character selected and not really moving them yet, but just getting the, the path to go from their start location. So for testing, what I did was uh, in the level blue uh, blueprint, uh, just get begin play, cast a game mode, get the game mode, get the character spawner, just spawn a, uh, one, one character just so I can play with it. So I think right now, if I press play, and I click on the actor. All right, so it does have actor over and then actor out. So we have the on mouse over and on mouse out of the actor, uh, but we don't have a click on it yet. And I think that's because in the player controller, I'm only looking for the floors. So we should probably refactor some of this stuff. Okay, so on left click, get the hit, get the level, we're gonna need that. Um, hit component, floor selected. So this is where I basically check if it's a floor or not. Add a new, how do I wanna set this up? 
private. Ooh, select character. That's I'm gonna need that. Uh, floor selected. Oh, that's just a pool. Maybe I should make like a. Uh, if they're clicking on it. So movement. I think with the phaser engine, I had just right. You left click the character, and then you right click to move. So left clicks should only be on actors. Unless I also want to clear it if I left click. But I think, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Let's first, let's just get this out of here. So floor selected. How do I want to do this? First off, I want to break this to the side. And get our header file. So this stuff on left click, this is all for floor stuff right here, starting from here. So I can move this out. Um, and again, I don't even think I need this. I think I only right now want to check if an actor was clicked. Again, I'm going to have to add more. I also want to make like a switch statement. Yeah, I might want an enum. Floor, character, opponent character, because if you're clicking on like your opponent's character, you might want to bring up like their health or stuff. But um, yeah, whatever. For now, I'll just I'll do something else. All right, so void on select character. This one's going to check. And just for now, void on select floor. So we want to do, let's see if this works. This hasn't been working for me recently. Oh, it worked, look at that. All right, so on left click, floor selected, location. Yep, 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 yep. And then for select character, we want to check something else. Maybe, God, I kind of do want to check. Uh, is it weird to put it in the player controller? I feel like it is. All right, I'll add a new class. Um, Selection type. And we want a pragma lens. Uh, enum. And we need to include for minimal. Include selection type dot generated dot h. So it actually builds our stuff for us. And then we need a enum e selection type. Unit eight, and we want what do we want? Uh, selection type. So there was going to be floor, character, opposing. Did I spell that right? Let's pretend I did. Generated, and that should be it for now. Um, because I think the menu handling. Hold on a second. needs them um, menu stuff will not be oh it actually might get in here whatever I can add it later on if I need to so selection type and then I want uh, not on select floor or what was the one that I had to check yeah this one so get selected type or something Let's build this, make sure it works first. If I remembered the magic incantations of Unreal. Oh, nope, I forgot generator body. Wait, do I need generator body for an enum? Where's my enums? Component, undeclared identifier. Oh, I pissed something off. Um, network, error response, enum. Nope, you don't. Enum class. 
I mess it up? Component undeclared identifier, line 58. Oh, oh, right, right. Nope, that's because, yeah, that's unrelated. Level, yep, so I need to, that's fine. I need to change the header anyways. So let's go back to our controller H. On left click is going to call into a E, oh, I need to include the header file. Header file. Include selection type E selection type for get clipped actor. And I need the hit results. Do I get the component here? Um, yeah, because I'm otherwise I'm just gonna have to call it again, so I'll pass in the component. You, pr you primitive component. All right, and then from there we can do a switch statement depending on what it is. So we want to save that. Print implementation. Now, where was that stuff? On left click. On select. I think I can do if not component just return from here. That's no, we can't do anything anyway, so let's just go out here. So then we call get click actor with the component. And we need to do a check on if floor selected. If floor selected. Return e selection type four. Now what? I how do I know if it's my character? Or the, oh, I know how to do that because I put it in the character data. But okay, I'll do that in a second. Um, so that we don't need anymore. Boop. This stuff. Right, that'll get called, so I'm going to need, on select floor, we'll need the primitive component, too. Because then we can call that afterwards. All right. Uh, else if. Uh, character is selected. Actually, I think. How complicated is this? Should I just do this inline? Eh. Actually, I don't even know what the name's going to return. Let's, uh... Let's find that out. We will find that out now. Component get name. Oh, where are we? Got battle level. UV log, log temp, morning pass to air so I see it. Text, uh, we clicked on star, component get name. Let's get rid of this for now. I'll just return. On select character doesn't do anything. On select floor will. Um, e select id selection. E selection type selected type is equal to that. Switch selected type. Case. Come on, you know I have a selection type. Give me floor. Uh, don't forget the brakes. Unlike go, you have to call break. <laughs> All right, so then we would call um, on select floor. Component. Component. 
and then just get the other ones in. Wow, it seems really slow today. Character. Break. And I already forgot what the other one was. It's like a posing character or something. Cool. Right. So let's figure out what happens when I click on the actor. Oh, well, let's make sure it builds first. Always a good first step. <laughs> Selection type generated, no such file directory. Boop. Selection type. That's what I call it, right? Do I need to do generate a body? I don't think I did. What? Yeah. Do I even need that? I mean, I do want to register it with the engine, so it would probably make sense. Oh, you know, class maybe. Maybe it needs to have a class modifier to do it. Nope, it just doesn't like it. Look at my other enum here. You enum. <laughs> you. Yeah. How about now? There we go. Off by one. Stupid character. All right, level, undeclared identifier. I'm missing a reference somewhere. Player control, level, or line 90. What did I change here? Oh, I need to pass in the level. Dang it. All right. Uh, level, level. Is that all I need? Yeah. All right. And save that. And we need to pass in the level. Oh, come on. You know what a battle level is? Wait, does it? Yeah. A battle level. Is that only. Shoot. Oh, let's hope I don't get any cyclical dependency issues here. Let's find out. God, C++, you're killing me. I miss my go. This would have been compiled like 10 years ago. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so now let's see what happens when I click on the character. We clicked on floor 57. Getting nothing. Why aren't you telling me? Well, oh. No, yeah, it should still be a component. Oh, wait a minute. It's not going to have a level. <laughs> Crap. So, that's interesting. If I get a character, does that matter? I mean, I'm going to get the result of the actor, so I can do the check here, but like, hey, is the actor a character or a level? Oh, it's a character, then do whatever I need for the character. But I'm worried about needing a, to hold a reference to the battle level. I don't think I do, because if I select the character and then I right-click somewhere on the, the map, 
it should just uh, it'll give me the the hit actor being the level, and then the component being whatever tile I clicked on, and then I can get the path that way. But that does make me wonder: do I need to store a reference to the selected character? Which I think. Oh, I already did. So I thought ahead. <laughs> oh, and I also thought about. Oh, okay, so I'll store the player characters as a pointer. When I select on the character, I'll make sure they're in that array. Otherwise, they're opposing as well. So okay, so I just need to change the logic here. That means I don't really need all. <laughs> I'm tired. I didn't need to do any of this. Uh, mm, hmm. All right. So selection type. How you doing? Let's put a floor in here. Level. Get rid of the floor. Character, opposing character. Because yeah, we're clicking on actors here, not uh or we're getting different actors here first. So let's go back. And on selected get clicked actor. I mean, I should have known. <laughs> I even said actor, not component. So I don't know what the hell I'm thinking here. So we're getting a a actor. I think is yeah, it's the default type. A actor, actor. No. All right, get clicked actor. Take you. Oh man, this is kind of, eh, I don't like this. If level return e selection type level. And then, I mean, it's kind of weird to do this because I'm already, I'm gonna have to cast it twice. Just dumb. Well, hmm. Yeah, I was trying to think the best way to do this. Because then back up here, I'm just going to have to call a cast again to get the level because it's going to be needed. Or, you know what? No, I don't need to do that if level and then I'll just branch off from get clicked actor that makes way more sense than trying to go back into the left click okay okay I feel better about that oh should I say get clicked actor or act on clicked actor handle click handle handle clicked actor because we're going to do something with it we're not going to get it. Okay. Get out of here. So that's cool. The component stuff will be for on clicked level. Okay, so then I'm going to do on clicked on bleh, on selected level. And then I can look at the floor. On select character, and then avoid on select opposing character. These are going to require actors, but whatever, I'll do that afterwards. <clears throat> okay, so God, it is uh, really hard to work with my font this big. <laughs> I must say, like I'm used to working it when it's like like that and I know none of you will be able to read any of that but it's just so much easier to see everything <laughs> anyways let's get back to it so we get our actor uh, if we don't have an actor we return component stuff that's gonna go somewhere else right now we need to call handle click to actor and pass in the hit results get actor and we shouldn't really need to do anything else in this method. So inside of handle clicked actor, if we have a level, 
we don't need to return selection to action. It's going to be void. So in fact, I did not need that enum at all. Cool. Okay. Whatever. Void. Uh, yep. 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 Uh, on select floor. Oh, did I change that to level? Yeah. On selected level. On select. Yeah. You know what? Unselected naming is important. Unselected level. That's where I want this stuff. And then on select floor should actually be not in there. It's just going to be in here too. Because now that I'm breaking this out, I don't feel bad about putting the logic closer to itself. So you don't need to exist anymore. But you, oop, I do need those references. Nope, I see below. Right, so we get the level, get the component of the level. We know the level's valid. Right, on selected. Level, level. And then return. Or selected. Should still probably make sure that we got what we expected. So if not component return, otherwise we just check if not component or not floor selected. Then we return. <coughs> Yep, and then it's the usual get component location, translate, set the start location. Cool. Although start location, that does not make any sense. That's going to be on the actor. So I will. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do for that, but whatever. Figure it out afterwards. Floor selected. It should be is floor selected. And it's four selected. Yep, okay. So handle click actor. And then we want to check if it is a base character. A base character. I can type that all with one hand. A base character. Yeah, not bad. Right. Yes. A base character. Get the actor. Don't want to call it level, that's for sure. Character. This does not need to return anything. I think for now we're just going to print it out. Just to make proper sure we have got. Character. Uh, character. Character. Get name. Actually, I might be able to get. Uh, what else can I read from this? Character. Pointer. I think I have like an F. Uh, what else? Base character. F character data character data. So character data. That is a struct. So name. Yeah. Let's try that. I don't know why my IntelliSense just stops working sometimes. But let's print that out too. Okay. Let's compile and see what I totally forgot to rename because I just changed a bunch of things. Probably delete that enum that I created too because I don't need that anymore. Whoa! Is floor selected illegal? Overloaded. Okay, I for totally forgot to pass in some stuff here. Where were we? Not battle level. Player controller. And dot H. 
and where were we? Where were we? On left clicked. All right, let's start from the top. On left click. It's complaining about line 62. Component is floor selected. Did I not save the header file? Anyways, on selected level, overloaded member function not found. On selected level. On selected level. Oh, yep, because I'm passing in the primitive component, which I'm not actually doing. Don't need that. On, is that the only error? Hit results, whoop, where was that? Hit result, undeclared identifier, line 60. Okay, it's gonna think all of this is invalid, so let's just recompile. God, I forgot how much time I just spent waiting for a compilation. What a waste of time. Nope, it's still angry. Did I not? On selected level, a battle level, level. Yep. All right. Controller.h, see declaration of controller. Oh, shoot. I just renamed a character. Oh, fail. Unreal takes all the good names. Um, battle character. Let's try that. And of course, you'll never know that you stole one of them until it yells at you. Still angry. Handle click actor primitive component. That's not what I want. Handle click actor. That is definitely an A actor. Haha, <laughs> it is not here. Result get now. I just oh my god, I am clearly too tired for doing this. I don't want any of you. We good with the A actor. We're passing in the handle clicked actor. That should be all it needs. Oof. Still hating me. Character cannot access private member declared in class A controller because I did I still forget to rename something? 53. Yep. Stop it. Of course, if my IDE worked properly, I would be able to uh, rename these, but. Floor selected identifier not found. All right, let's take a look at that error. Floor selected, player controller 110. Oh, crap. Oh, right, 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 because I was going from there too. Oh, this is, I better not right click, because I just, uh, I'm just gonna, just in case, so I don't crash. Just in case I'm testing something and if I right click, it's not gonna have a start location. Oh. oh my god, leave me the hell alone. Just left of get name must have class track union. Line 52. Why is this still complaining about hit result? Did I not? Screw this. I'm just going to get the character and move on with life. I will look up that stuff afterwards. Let's just try to get rid of these stupid errors. Line 60, hit results. I need to pass into on selected level the actual. You know what? Let's do the primitive component there on the left click. Oh, wait. then I would have to, am I using that anywhere else? Um, 
Yeah. We can check for the null inside of here. Oh, I could probably do this above. Although, I think only the level needs the actual component that's hit. With battle character, I just need to know the actor. So, let's pass it in here. And then, not forget to update this. The U primitive component. component. Make sure I upload this header file. that's spelled correctly yep. okay so now I should have my components got the battle level we clicked come on give me my small wins Complaining about hit result. Where am I? My eyes are just not working tonight, apparently. Line 46. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Hit result, good actor. Screw it. I'm just gonna pass in the <laughs> stupid hit result. This is stupid. Oh my god, handle clicked actor, hit result. F hit results. I'm pretty sure it's a reference. Is it? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a reference. Isn't it? Or is it? Uh, well, I'm going to pass it in as a reference, so that's fine. And now i got to do all this crap again. Jesus. Hit results. Get actor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pretend nothing happened. There. That should. That should be it. I don't even know what I was trying to do. To be honest, like I've just been like. Smashing bugs. Oh, of course I'm missing. 47. Line 47. I forgot a stupid semicolon. Down to one error though, so it's promising. Alright. Now I have three new ones. Awesome. What is going dude? I should probably give up soon because this is clearly not working in my favor. Oh my god. It's a pointer. Gotta use pointer notation, not dot notation. Arr. Why didn't it tell me that before? Oh my god. Note C declaration of ABS character. I've never had so many problems with one stupid line of text. Battle character. Log temp, warning, text, get char got character, battle character, get name. Use of undefined type. Do I not have... I do not have it included. Include battleometry characters, base character. Swear to God. I'm usually much faster at developing, by the way. This is just like my brain is fried. It's been a long week, so. Oh, well, CO2 levels aren't too bad, so I'm not at least choking to death. Thank you. Jesus Christ. Okay. So, we click on our actor. Got base character zero. All right. That's all we wanted to do. <laughs> See if this still works. Yeah, it still works. Cool. All right, so I think what the plan here is to go to bed um, because clearly I'm tired, and then work on moving 
the selection of the character uh, it will first be selected in the player controller the uh, the player's selected character will be the start location oh that will need to read from the movement component because I might say I'm going to store just like in the phaser engine where you would uh, right click once it would move it like let's say three tiles and then you'd be able to right click again and it would move it another three so it would save that location so I'm going to need to use or call into this uh, movement component which isn't too difficult I think everything's already there so it's just a matter of yeah just wiring that up so you select the character you'll be able to move them and then you can left click on another one uh, sorry I just got a message uh, it's from Bladum. I saw you from a link on an AR Discord. Is there any way people from the community can help you? That's a great question. Um, thank you. Uh, right now, I mean, like, I'm so early development of this. Like, the combat system, while I have some of it in, isn't even wired up yet. Um, so I don't want to waste people's time with, like, getting suggestions or anything until I have combat in and we can actually like do something because <laughs> like moving characters around isn't exactly a really good way of spurring discussion um, but yeah I'm definitely interested in once I have the ability to play it setting I'm gonna set up a discord server um, I'll probably push out to the reddit atlas reactor uh, thing which people still comment on amazingly after all these years even though it's been shut down so yeah and any other suggestions for um, getting community involvement that'd be great but yeah it's still like really early in this this stage i've only been working on this for it was like three months and yeah this is like a, a nights and weekend thing so i don't i don't know how long it's going to take but hopefully as i mentioned i think in my last video hopefully I have something playable in three months and then i need to set up uh server instances and get something out there and packaging and uh yeah. Also, I want to, I want this to be on mobile too, so you can just play on your phone. Um, so yeah, that's going to be a whole other thing because I don't have an Android phone. I only have uh, iOS, so we'll see what uh, what I can do there. But yeah, lots of stuff to do. But I'm excited. I'm still very much into this, getting this playable. So I'm going to be here for a while. So no worries about that. But yeah, um, other things that I haven't really discussed. I think I discussed once before is. Uh, some of the game modes so the initial release is just going to be 1v1 where you select three characters and you move them all and it's just the same with your opponent uh, and then I'm going to have probably a t I think a 3v3 mode and I might have a two uh, basically two people would control uh, maybe four characters I don't know how I'm going to do it yet but definitely more than just 1v1 but then another thing that I do want for a game mode is to have a chess.com style uh, game mode where you can make daily moves. So you'd set a time limit, say I want to move uh, every 24 hours. You find someone else who wants to play a game where they can move every 24 hours. You log in in the morning, you have like six games, you can just make your moves and then shut it down for the night. Come back and then you can check it again and be like, oh, they, this person moved, move your character again. And then, yeah, you can just play that way. So it's much more like casual as opposed to the the real-time one but I want both because I like both I like the real-time and I like also the check my phone every once in a while and play a round or a match so yeah that's the plan uh, no idea of timelines again three months is the first like let's get something playable and then we'll we'll see what happens from there but uh, I am so tired <laughs> so I think I'm gonna call it for night so uh, thanks for joining thanks for watching uh, until next time <laughs>